Welcome to Mr. Hamilton's Math Bites. This video is about continuous versus discrete functions. Let's first quickly have a look at what a continuous function is. A continuous function is anything that doesn't have gaps in it. So a linear relationship is a continuous function. Uh, an exponential relationship is a continuous function. We can have continuous function of a parabola. We can have a continuous function of a hyperbola. Anything. These are all continuous functions because they are solid lines all the way through. Continuous function is a solid line all the way through. It would be a very simple way to put that. So if we were to list the domain of this, you would say in the first case, the domain of a linear relationship would be the set of all real numbers. You could say that the range of a linear relationship would be also the set of all real numbers. And you could see much the same thing for an exponential relationship. Um, let's say this value down here is negative 5, and that would have an asymptote. So the only difference in the exponential form would be that you have x being the set of all real numbers, but the y is the set of all real numbers such that it's greater than 5 because of that asymptote. And then obviously for parabola, you'd have uh, domain and range as well. Specifically though, these are the most important functions because we're going to see how we turn them from continuous functions to what we call discrete functions. Discrete functions, on the other hand, only exist at distinct values. They only exist at distinct and separate values. So for example, if you're looking at a graph of a linear discrete function, you're going to see a function that looks like this. You can't draw a line through it because it only exists at these specific points. If you're looking at a graph of a um, geometric function, it actually looks like an exponential function, but again, it only has these discrete functions. In fact, these are the types of discrete functions we're going to look at in this unit. We're going to look look at arithmetic functions, and we're going to look at geometric functions. Those only exist as discrete functions at specific points, and we're going to see why that's the case. So if I give some values to these, uh, let's say this is 2, this is 4, uh, this is pretty much on 0. Let's say this is negative 2, and let's say this is um, negative 4 and negative 6. What we're going to have here is we're going to have a domain that is only existing from negative 6 to 4 every 2. So you could just go ahead and list it as negative 6, um, negative 4, negative 2, 2, 4. And it also exists at 0. So we'll put that in there as well. Um, and then the range would just be, again, just a list of numbers that would, occur, would correspond with the y values of the specific points. Same over here, the domain in this case, if we had this being, let's say this is negative 5, let's say this is negative 3, this is negative 1, let's say this is 1, obviously this isn't to a great scale. Uh, if this was 3 and this was 5, then we would say the domain of this function is negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, 5. You notice I've added, you notice I've added a graph here on the right, and this goes up by single values of integers. So it goes from negative 2 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 as x values. And so you could list this as I did for the other two, but this is a special case where we could say the domain is the x is a set of all integers. We sometimes use a capital I or a Z sometimes, such that x is between negative 2 and positive 4. So we'd say x is between negative 2, and it's equal to negative 2, or greater than that, and it's less than or equal to 4. And likewise, you could say for the range that the y value is a set of all integers such that y is between 1 and 6. So you could say y is between 1 and 6. And that is a special way of being able to write the domain and range. There you go, discrete and continuous functions.